I'm recording. Okay. Right. So while I was developing this um, program of the earth, I was like, you know, receiving tons of information and I couldn't figure out where, what information was supposed to go where, which is kind of cool because I really don't want my healing work to be separate from my photography. Um, but this one piece came through that didn't fit into of the earth and it wasn't until like Thanksgiving, it was the day of Thanksgiving that I realized that it was referring to my personal work and um, it's just like a line and, and it, I don't want to call this the the working title, I think the working title is going to be between time and space or something like that. Um, but it's the storyline of the divine feminine through time. Um, and I really love what that kind of encompasses because there is like a timeless nature to it. And I know that like when we talked last, you kind of brought my attention to the fact that I was talking a lot about time. Yeah. And, um, I kind of feel like magic and the work I do with magic really places me in a space that's timeless. Uh -huh. um, and I think that's where I'm like most able to connect into the truth of who I am and my source like energy. Um, so I really love this idea of creating a timeless space and bringing the divine feminine into it through her many facets. So um, just really allowing the subject to reflect where I am at currently in my exploration of the feminine. Okay, so, um, so, so so it was reminding me a little bit of the female fairy tale and just so you know like I don't know how much you know about that series but that was like my most narrative series because I used a thread and I you know I think that creating a cohesive body of work needs a thread I'm still in a belief system that that whatever that thread might be right and and threads you know can uh we create them because we're artists, right? So we create what the thread is. Like it can be literal, it can be by subject matter, it can be by time period. We talked about these things the last time we met. Mm -hmm. So the thread for me in the female fairy tale was one, all the pictures had to stem from my, my autobiographical emotional life. And two, every model wore the same dress, right? Wait, and were you in that one? I don't I know. So. Yeah, was that the one where you painted my eyes? No, that was right before that. That was right before that. So that wasn't I don't that think you were in the female fairy tale. Um, but so and so I literally scripted it by just brainstorming all of my major emotions that I was going through. Um, so they were big headers and feminist stuff like uh, sexuality, reproduction, marriage loneliness, depression, isolation. So they were like that, right? So your your things tend to be more mis mystical. Like your, so you're not, I, my stuff has always been like psych, psyche, like uh, psyche. Um, um, and, and narrating things that are, are psychological are, are totally open to interpretation. Like they could be spot on, have meaning for me, but not, not necessarily for somebody else, right? So that's sort of like the ambiguity or um, abstraction of, of art and what art can do. So you you could make an image that was totally like a, a specific character, but you can't be sure that anybody's gonna get that association, right? So like only the people that like within that group of knowledge or experience, right? So, but then what happens, like, if you think about people that study art or even study writing, that whole time they're studying that they're, they're right, they're trying, they're putting those, they're deciphering it, they're interested in it and they're deciphering it, right? So sometimes it's cool to make stuff that's complicated and has like hidden keys in it and doesn't give away, doesn't give it all away, right? Um, so that you could evoke you know, more, more curiosity. And I think really that's like the, what I consider like the most interesting work right now is things that sort of like um, are provocative. Um, and I think that's why I've always liked to like add the encaustic to them is that I've made them whatever reality they had in the imagery. Then I added this sort of like veil of almost like 
skin, right? That had like damage and scars and texture and painting. So that was sort of my way. Um, I think even using any type of alchemistic or film process is gonna also give you um, a vulnerability and a, um, well, it's definitely gonna give you historical context, right? Um, are you still thinking about using the view camera? I think I'm gonna stick, I think I'm gonna start with, um, 35 because it's what I've been working well, with said, right. and I don't really want it to um I don't want the process to impede on my creative my creation you know what I mean okay. like not at this point like once I'm in the flow I feel like I'll be able to bring in different tools but I feel like from transitioning from digital back into film a little bit more deeply um and consistently I want to stick to what I know to begin and then like go back to what I have to remember um which is kind of, that would be a fun- Or relearn, part. right? Oh, you mean when you talk about large format? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely thinking 35 millimeter. And I agree, I do think that that process of like developing it myself and using um, the alchemical like process of development will add a lot of like depth and texture. Right, and how do you, do you have any, do you have any idea how you see the final product? Yeah, I really see it in a hardbound book, I think. Um, and it's going to be, yeah, like printed on pages. Um, and text. I, you know, it's so funny that you say that because I, I, I do think it will have text, but um, I was like, didn't say that, but I do <laughs> think it will, yeah. Okay. And pictures of women, but I also think that you- Not women, not just women. Cause I put like, um, I like- If you're into, in the set, in this, into sexuality. Did you look up the Tony Ward? I did, yeah, his work is amazing. So cool. I think too, just like, yeah, cr like allowing the feminine to kind of like move into the margins. You know what I mean? And like yeah. find those spaces where it, it does create like, I like what you were saying about almost the mystery, you know, because I think I do really kind of travel in those mysterious realms, the realms of the unknown, like um, a lot of like where the question remains. You know what? I really, um, like, I really like your self portrait. I like to, I, are you taking most of those pictures of yourself? I, 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 you, um, which ones? I think this could be a majority of self portraits and like your, you know, you and, and Joe, I mean, I don't know. Um, I mean, he's such a great uh, artist model person for you. And you can really, um, and I think you have a lot of material already. So have you started, do you have an image? Do you have an image, a image that you think already sort of uh, does what you, has everything you need, like does what you. As far as this goes, like. Yeah, do you have like an image that you could definitely put in the group, like could be a leader or set the pace? Like, do you have a. Yeah, I do. Um, it's the, it's that one, um, if you want to share, yeah. I, I have a pull up. Um, it's actually in the folder that um, I shared in the Google Drive too with you. I can open up the Google Drive, hold on. Okay, yeah, I just put in um, like a folder of storylines and it was kind of just like all a co combination of my work that I feel like in some way hits hits it. Um, but I would say the, I'll wait until you have it open so I'm not just talking, but. Oh, wait, that's our meeting. Hold on. It's, I think it's in that visual culture because that's the name of the folder. So it might be in the, um, oh, in this might, one? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Here you go. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Um, and it's in the folder storylines at the top. So, um, these are just images that kind of like in some way are referring to it because we last time we kind of talked about going back through my work and looking at like, what might already fit into it. And I don't necessarily think this is what I want my work to look like moving forward, but it it holds some of it for me. Oh, 
Oh, come on. <laughs> All right, we'll skip that. What? Wait. Stop. God. There's so many cool, like, alternative processes here. Like, it's such a... I feel like um, either that first one of these four or this last one, this one, like, I feel like this is kind of like what speaks to it for me. And then the this first one, um, not that one, but the next one, this one. Yeah, I think we talked about this one. Yeah. And I like this one too. I like this one. I love this one. Yeah, I think this one has potential, but I don't like the background. Like, I think that your background has to be more, for lack of a better word, abstract or dreamy, like just is too relevant to, um, but this could be a reshoot and it speaks to so many things about gender and sexuality. I mean, really what I get from your work though is gender and sexuality. I mean, and then you add your interest in tarot and spirituality. So then you have, then you have, I, I we have to think of a better word than mysticism though. So that's just too. Yeah. You know, I've always liked the word whimsy because that allows me to just be like light and airy and like not to like, but I think there's a better, and I don't think spirituality is, this is, this I love you, when you do this type of work, but I don't think this is, this is something else that you do. Mm -hmm. This is like something else that you do for pop culture and marketing. And I mean, that could be like a whole other series. So I think what, if anything right now, you need the freedom to work. And I often do this too. Like I need to give myself the freedom to work, but I don't have to be specific and everything doesn't have to be matchy matchy to like sections. But then I just can like, in my mind, I know that this is going over there more commercially stuff. Like this is going like for wax works. This is going over here. And then this is like my current most interesting, you know, like I'm, I'm doing a series right now. That's just about serenity and quiet and like, um, I'm just going to make a bunch of small, it's just something I need to do. Like I did a series on landscapes where I really wanted it to be super trip, trippy and reverse and upside down. And I wanted the land and the sky to come together and everything sort of compound, like, cause it's like trap. Like I felt like I've just been feeling that like I live in a terrarium with COVID. Like I walk the same path. I'm like on the same circle. I can't get out. I'm just like stuck here, like in a terrarium. Yeah, you know, like in a glass box, right? So um, I really like this one. I feel like this is also really close to, um, like I want the work to be black and white and I wanna go back in and color it. But um, I definitely agree that the background, I feel like it does need to be almost like studio, basic kind of like either timeless background or like fantastical background, like set build, you know? Um, but I agree that it does need to be a, that's why this well, this, works well. this too is very theatrical. You should watch this David Bowie documentary. You know, like he was just such like a weirdo loser for so long. Like he just did terrible theatrical shit. And when he had his homosexual relationship, he was like with this mime, this weird old gay mime dude and like dressing up in like baby clothes and painting his face white, white and like doing, like learning to mime. Like what? A, what? What a fucking weirdo. Yeah. How <laughs> Like, that's cool, right? Like, what a fucking weirdo. <laughs> no, sorry. What's it called? It, it, I'll find it. It's on Netflix. It's just like, it's like his early years. It's like a documentary on David Bowie in his early years. Okay, but, I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and he is our, like, he is our mystic, you know, for every artist, like, right? And the interesting thing about him, too, that I just love more than anything is it wasn't actually even, like, his intention to become... Mm -hmm. Well, no, wait, it was his intention to become famous, right? So he kept trying and trying and trying and trying and trying and trying, right? But it was through art artifice, through creating this artificial being, this other person, Ziggy Stardust, that he actually got any recognition because himself, like he was just not doing it. He was not making it. He was not, 
he was not as good as the other bands. He wasn't getting it right. He was so moody. His songs were too wordy. Like you'll see it. It's just like, it was Ziggy Stardust, right? So it was like through this other portal, right? Persona, whatever you want to call it, like that he actually got recognition, right? And he was actually able truly to be his best artist. Ziggy Stardust allowed him, sort of gave him permission and gave him like a, a style, right? So that's sort of like what you're looking for is your Ziggy Stardust. Right. And your Ziggy Stardust is like where all of your Tiffany are, you know, the artist Tiffany becomes full fruition, right? Full force of what you, what's best, right? What, what's going to work for you and, and um, be successful. Now, I, I really like this and I don't see why this and, oh, God, I didn't mean I don't see why that these two don't go to like this. I, I don't this and this go together to me. Do you think that? Oh yeah, totally. Well, they're actually on the same backdrop too. Yeah, and I think the color palette is the same. I mean, I think that that's this, you know, and uh, this moody purple. Um, I think this is like perfect. Okay, so those two, this just no. I mean, no. Maybe this, maybe, but maybe it's just so abstract. Like it's just not, uh, and maybe if you painted it, I mean, you could keep, use this image and try different variations. Too literal, too literal. Like, no, this is possible, right? This one I like, so that, I don't know how many, put, I, this one for sure. You know what else your work reminds me of and always has, and I don't know if I've told you, fucking Easy Rider, girl. Yes. Fucking, right? Like, Easy Rider. It gives me chills. Like, I it just, I think I watched that movie like 50 million times, right? So, Bel you know, you're like Velvet Underground, Easy Rider, Ziggy Stardust, right? Like, um, Clarence John Laughlin. Do you know his work? No. All right, wait, let's look at his work for a second. So these are all like, and of course, um, these are all like New Orleans people. So you, I don't know why you guys don't live there. Oh, uh, well, that's really freaking weird you say that because last night I feel like I had a dream about it. That you're living there? I think yeah. we all should live there. Yeah, seriously, I know Carly. I just think that Duncan though would definitely be like dead of alcoholism in about <laughs> two years. <laughs> Like it might be the end of him, but it would be a good end, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> easy end. It'd be a real easy end. It'd be the big easy end. It would be an end. So <laughs> Clarence John Laughlin, like incredible. Ooh. Like incredible, incredible. Like he doesn't do that many women, but the ones that he do, does are like to die. Like, right? Wow. Yes. Damn. So, like, I guess in a way, like, maybe I'm suggesting to you, like, exactly. oh my God, yes, love this work. Right, 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 right. So, he's been one of my faves forever. But sometimes, like, for me, like, I, I don't know, I tend to steer, steer away from too much goth, just for me personally, because but I think there's ways to, you know. Yeah, merge the two. Right, so double exposures, right? And I just don't like to use, personally, I don't like to use angels in my stuff I'm, it, intentionally, like literally, but I know uh, people do. I mean, one of my favorite artists too does angel stuff all the time, um, Camille Wagner, but I don't really think that's your thing either the angel thing but those first it. couple like this one's pretty fucking cool so again it's about sort of like more of this miss back to that word the mystery i think like the mystery. mystery dark mystery this one's maybe my favorite i mean i do love this one but i think that this one. Oh, and wait you like the one of the this one this like no oh, face look at this, crazy one. this one's crazy look at that hand crazy wait this oh this one yeah i love that yeah 
Yeah, I like this one too. Like the like anonymous, almost like how what he's working with almost creates like something anonymous in some way, you know? Oh, I like that. Write that word down, anonymous. Ambiguity. Uh, all right, so this is very, like, this is very, this one's definitely in there. This one, no. This one, maybe. This one, yes. No. I don't know. This one, yes. May, let's say you say that may, strong maybe, yes. 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 So I think that was like five. And for sure, like, right? Yeah, I feel like those last four are the most progressed of my work um, and like definitely more of the direction I want to go. But I like I like the idea of pulling in elements from the other stuff. Well, but, yeah, but you're going to you know what, but you're going to you're all, you're going to like go into the shoot and then you're going to whatever happen, you know, then you're going to pick what you know, you're going to go through the whole process with every photo shoot and you're not always going to get it. You're not always going to, it's not, you know, you're not always going to get it. And then there'll be, but you'll get something, you know, and then it'll go in the other category. So you just have to hold this category. Okay. I hear what you're saying. Yes, I get it. I have to move because my computer's going to, but you have to hold this category above all others as I guess it has to have certain, very certain qualifications, right? That are just a little bit higher. Um, if that makes sense. Totally. Yeah. Like it, they it have to meet a certain criteria. Um, they just have to meet a certain criteria. Well, I guess people. that's where the thread comes in. Well, right. But that's where you're, that's why, right. That's, it's the editing. It's just the editing. And, and I mean, I never tell anybody to hold themselves back from doing work. You have to work, all, you know, you have to work all the time. Come on, students. You have to work all the time. And then, and then you have to go through the process. You know, the discerning, the separating, the the analyzing, the organizing, the editing, right? And sometimes, um, and if you're going to paint them too, like that's a process unto itself, right? That's like, you're going to have to make a bunch of prints and then try different colors. And if you're going to do double exposures, you have to kind of go through a similar process with that, right? So maybe you could work simultaneously on shooting and also combining images that you already have, right? So you wanna think about what images could possibly be double exposed, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that you, even from what I've seen of your work, like on your Instagram, I think you have more images than you put in this folder. Oh yeah, probably. Um, I was really like, when I was just thinking about like this, I was thinking about how the storyline of the divine feminine, like, because it lives within all of us, it is like the life force. Um, it like my storyline is its storyline. So I was kind of just like trying to find like actual storylines of like my process and like go back far enough to see where I was starting to touch on it. Um, and kind of like where it's being, how it's being developed, I guess. I would say of all of these images, I would say this one, And this one. I agree with that. And so here you have two styles, right? And you have two images. I would pull these out and print them and have them near you. And they have, um, they just have, I think all the elements that you've described to me I mean, I think all your work does, but I think those two um, are special. And what's interesting too, is that they're cropped pretty tight. They're not that wide. They're not about um, um, the space or the environment. You know, they're, they're, they're more about the power that these people sort of have you know, sort of the magic these, that these people have. And it's sort of mysterious. You're not sure what it is. It's not over literal. Um, I don't know if you're feeling like you want to go wider. So, so how can I, what can I, how can I help you? Do you want to read what, it, I mean, 
Um, well, I, I don't I, think they have to be discerned by the cropping or the space or the, I don't think they have to be separated like that. I think they have to have a certain intensity and ambiguity to them. I think it's like ambiguity, like some mystery, like it has to invoke, it has to invoke the feminine for me. It has to invoke the mystery. It has to invoke the unknown. Yeah, and they're not portraits. They're not portraits of people who are like in, in you know, it's not like you're t like showing that people are mystic, right? Or yeah. mystic, like, no, they're not portraits. They're more, right? They're more powerful than that. So they're more about like spiritual power or like we have to try to figure out what uh, yeah, what it is. <laughs> yeah, well, I do like, uh, I got an image of the shoot that I want to do and I, I'm going to do it tomorrow night. Oh, cool. Uh, in, uh, the snow, in the snow? I was actually going to do it inside, but it might be cool to do in the snow. Maybe I'll do both. <laughs> so it will be covered outside and I have some really beautiful ivy that'll probably be, if, depending on how much we get. But um it's my friend Abby she's got this like re there's something like so wonderful about her like huge big hair and she has this like um I'm, I'm gonna shoot her nude with just this necklace of snake vertebrae that she has um and possibly I have this like skull um but I feel like just the snake necklace and I was gonna paint like black across her eyes mm -hmm. um so like I had that image kind of came in while I was like thinking about where I want to take it next. And I, I don't know what it is, but it kind of like does hit it. Like, I guess it is something about like power. Like there is like a power in like, yeah, almost like the, the place where our soul is reflected in the physical, you know, where there is like something that's beyond us reflected, beyond like the individual. I don't know, I'm kind of like pulling it out of thin air right now, but it's, it's a, a little bit ambiguous. <laughs> I'm trying to, uh, I think that you're tied to symbolism, right? I feel like you're yeah. tied to symbolism. So the sword, the skull, the feather, the sun, the moon, right? And I think honestly, at the end of the day, like a cane, like if you can't, you know, your legs fucking hurt and you, you know, how do you get around? You use a cane, so, or a crutch. These symbols, I think you need them. So in a way, force, if you force yourself to use them or not, no, wait, I meant, okay. If you state that you're going to use them and you write a list of what they are, then you're going to have to be create, then you're going to, then that you have to be you, like you have to manipulate the model. You have to design it. You have to, so like you got the feather and like, what, what's this one going to be like? Right, you maybe even have the sword, like right. So you have the sword, and and this one, like, this is the devil, right? This is the devil, right? So this is the devil. So you did the sword, you did the devil, you did the feather, right? The sword. I'm kind of working with the tarot. I think you should. We talked about this. This could be one of this. This could be like because this, okay. this could be the sun. I mean, this could be this is a very sun sun like the circle. This could be the sun. Now, the you're you're the artist. So, right, you're the creator. You can associate and make this which what you know, whatever one you want. OK. And then this. What would this one be? Kind of the moon, just this like with the, the water. Yeah, like it looks like the moon is like rising like from over the okay. horizon. So you don't have to explain to me. Okay, so now you have the moon, the sword, the feather, um, the sun. Did I say the sword? Yeah, you did. I think, yeah, I think I just have to, I think I'm just going to fucking work with the tarot, which is so funny because I did. Write a list. So what, so write a list. So what, what else is, so you have the sun and then, so then, so follow it, follow it. And then if whatever else happens, 
If you do more than one sun one, that's fine. If you do another moon one, that's fine. You just have to follow your inspiration, but use the tarot and the list. Like, just like I was telling you about the female fairy tale, how I used that list. That was my, for, okay, let's not use, let's not call it a crutch. Let's call it something more positive. But the reason I'm thinking about a crutch <laughs> is that it gives you support and it helps you move forward. The crutch is right? right? It's like the, the guide. It's the guide. It's like, it's like, it's like, it's the map, whatever you, whatever you want to call it. I still like crutches, the crutches, but yeah. not that you're broken or injured, but, well, but in a way, maybe like that's like artists, <laughs> think we're all sort of broken. And injured, but, um, so the list, write the list, go through multiple tarot decks. Like my whole life is changing a lot right now. Um, I had a tarot reading with my sister-in-law and I pulled the dis destruct destruction or dismantler or, and that card was like, but that's a perfect card. That's a great card. Like mm -hmm. that's like Clarence John Laughlin where you can have like a totally picture of a broken down building with all that demolition. And then you can have a ghost in there. Mm -hmm. Like there are so many cards, um, but that card, I was terrified of that card. And then my, I was like, wait, can we start again? <laughs> I don't want that one. And then I'm like, no, I can't, you can't just start again. So I took it. And then of course my life totally fell apart and it's fine. But I mean, you know, and all out of destruction comes, you know, rebirth. And that's just, you know, I believe in that cycle. But I was really glad that I had that tarot card reading before all the shit that went down went down. And I was like, Oh, okay. This is meant to happen. This, you know, it's good. this, I was, I was forewarned. Mm -hmm. Totally. You know, and, I, and I think that that is really like the artist's job as, um, you know, I've been spending a lot of time with some of my older books and like the history of photography. If you look at the history of photography, artists have been describing, you know, technology, social issues, uh, emotional issues, health issues, environmental changes in 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 photography has been like forefront of the descriptor and narrator of the time right so here you are as a photographer using photography as a medium describing what's happening in this time right so it could also be associated to that and you should be you know thinking about that and writing about that like what how does covid make you feel how does environmental changes make you feel you know what culturally your your youth culture your friends physical traumas you know um you, you know what's affecting you and don't ever underestimate the power of trauma and what's affecting you in the work right because that's what's going to drive you to make the work right and you're also, I have to tell you, like you're at the most emotionally charged portion of your life. Like now that I'm older, I'm not as emotionally charged. Like the charge goes away. Not that I'm not creative or inspired or I love art, but the charge, that raw charge goes, fades. Or for me, for me it has. And then that, but I was, I'm proud I did, you know, I'm very proud that I did that really passionate, and this is a part, like you said it yourself, this is your time to do this work. You know, you're seeing the opportunity, you're taking the opportunity, you know, to, to do this work, mm -hmm. right? So that's super important. So wait, go back to the working title. What did you say the working title was? It was like, basically, it's bullshit now because I just see that it it needs to be on the trail. I know, like, but you're not gonna call it that. You know? I know, I know. But, you know, uh, like in my tarot collection, like, <laughs> <laughs> and if you I, do, I have written down between time and space. But what does that mean to be between time and space? What does it, that feel it, like? What, what, is, like, what does that feel like? What, that is that what you think you are? You're like, are you like suicidal? Like, are you in this world, but don't want to be in this world? No. Or are you right? So you're in this world, but you're navigating you're drawing from another plane because this world's so fucked up. So, okay. Yeah, totally. I think too, there's like that timelessness when I'm between time and space, like when I'm in sacred space, when I create containers for myself to actually check in and be here, 
Like I am between time and space. Like I'm, I'm not concerned with anything, but what's here, you know? Um, but what, what's where, what's here? What are you talking about? What's here? What, what does that mean? I'm not concerned with anything, but what's here huh? with like, um, write that down. I, I, I need, I need clarification on that. <laughs> I think what I'm saying is there's no distraction from soul. There's no distraction from like my, myself. There's no connect. There's so, no, for me, it's my insane imagination, right? So I'm always tripping. Okay. So I'm, I mean, I'm always tripping. I'm always, I'm looking at this plant right now and I'm fucking tripping. Like I'm seeing, I'm breaking it down. I'm seeing all the little fuzzy parts. I'm thinking about light and darkness. I'm thinking about this thing being a lot, like, right. These little round flowers are like talking to me, right? Like nature, nature talks to me. I mean, I would say that na nature and animals talk to me now more than other people. And I think that that's, part of like what COVID's done for me is I, I can't, I, I can't take on that many. I mean, outside of my immediate family, there's so much trauma here just, and I've been secluded. Like I can't, I'm not as interested in everybody's mm -mm, as I was. So I'm just kind of interested in staying survival, like more personal survival. So maybe that's what you mean. But again, like where is here for you? Here for me is my imagination, right? My trippy effing imagination that just like I, everything's alive and everything, nature, everything's important. Every little flower, every like water, like the, the way el the elements, like the way the things, things look and move and, and, the, and the earth, nature, right? I think you're here for me is like really within the sensual. It's really within what I'm like feeling, touching, smelling, hearing, like hear, sense, like sense. Tactile, ex sensual experience of it. You know, like when I'm like really rooted in my body, like I know I'm here and I'm like, I want to be here. Right. It, as opposed to like being pulled away, like into a, a, a trip, but like this one right? Like this is about, this to me speaks about escapism and like, you know, vanishing, right? Like, and Clarence, like John, like Laughlin's work, I think is, is totally about death, mm -hmm. right? So maybe you're talking about like, you're here is like fighting for your life, right? So how do you fight for your life? You're fighting for your life through like some people fight for their life through faith. Like they commit themselves to a God and they stay connected to their life through a belief system. Like whether it's, you know, some people's belief systems can be religious, they can be institutional, they can be science-based, like whatever, right? So what you're, if you're connecting yourself to the tarot, you're believing in a system, right, of, symbols, gods and God, not wow. right? Tools, tools, right? Practices, right? That are gonna connect you, help you fight for your life, right? So the between time and space, I think is even fine as a title. I still think you can be more specific about your need to make this artwork and what this art, you know, what this, like, this is very combative, you know, and very emotional. I, the, I love this picture. I love the sharpness of the sword and sort of the Im, import, unimportance of her, right? And I love the soft focus. I mean, I love this picture. It's beautiful. This is a very portrait to me. I think this idea, I think, but I do think that like meeting the devil would be like that. Like, do you know what I mean? It wouldn't be blurry. <laughs> so, and like I, 
like I use a lot of eyes like what do eyes close mean what does out of focus mean you know what does the double exposure mean and I you know is it about like um you know I think you have to look at what like you you have to really ask yourself those things I can't I can't answer those questions for you I mean, I know I've been suicidal. I know I've been depressed. I know I've wanted to kill myself. I know I've wanted to kill other people. I've, you know, I know I, you know, took a lot of risks. I know I, you know, I, um, I was raped, you know, like these are sort of like, again, like experiences, you know, that you, that I've had that I know are always affecting, you know, my work. Um, and especially my older work, right? And I, uh, too, my path was photographing the female figure, like the, and learning about other people's trauma so that I could heal my own trauma, especially the nudes. Like, and to this day, like I couldn't, I could never do better work than I've already done. And that saddens me in a lot of ways because I just couldn't, I couldn't, I can't be better than I was because I went so deep and hard and did my job. I really did. And now you're doing your job. So you have to go deep and hard, right? And, it, and I mean, you might not have to do as much work as I had to do for as long a period of time, but um, that just was like, that. that was just, you know, work for me. And, and even the female fairy tale was sort of even like, it was sort of like, almost like not, not lightweight, lightweight, but in comparison to the work that that other work was, was, you know, deeper. And, and I had a lot, I have a lot of, pro, you know, people don't want to look at nudity, like whatever. And that it's fine. I know I did. I know that I, for me, for my life, I did the work I needed to do. That's the most important thing. I think that's all I'm trying to say, like not the recognition or the shows or any, you know, any of that other stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. And I think that you are well, you of all people are well aware of that. You're an artist, you're on the path. And when you look at that, Dave, if you watch that David Bowie documentary, same thing, like he was on the path and he just kept trying and trying and trying and trying to find what was going to work. Mm. you know totally for him to to kind of like put it all together so I think you're creating the crutches like the crutches you know like and to like the circle around you so that you have the tarot you have time and space you have just historical medicinal like I see medicine in you you're a healer you have to include that person right? You're a trippy, imaginative, you know, fashionista, like you have to include fashion, medicine, tarot, imagination, timelessness. So that's five things, right? Mm -hmm. Is there anything else? And, and, and really photography is about technology. Yeah. I mean, so, and alchemy, right? So you have to include that too. Yeah, definitely alchemy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I definitely am, um, yeah, like going to sit with and listen back to like, to a lot of what you just spoke to, too, because I do think, you know, like this past like week, you know, or last week, like we had a fucking friend die from an overdose. Joe thought he had a heart attack. I had to bring him to the fucking hospital. Like we lost our, our engine blue. Like it was just like the like craziest fucking week. And like just seeing, it was so beautiful. Like Hawk appeared to me three times. Like I was driving to get candles for the altar I had built for our friend and the Hawk dive bomb the fucking car. And then I go to the shop and we're like, it's Joe's business partner. So like we're going through all of his old work and he has this drawing of this Hawk. So I like take it with me. And then when I go to pick up Joe at the hospital there's a fucking Hawk like circling over the hospital. And I'm like, just sitting with that medicine and like realizing that like through these really hard fucking times, like the more that I'm present in my creative process of looking around at the signs, looking around at the symbols, like looking for the magic in myself, because it's all me, in myself to really um, find comfort and trust and faith 
in like the timing of it all and the unfolding of it all, the more I'm, the more I am capable of surviving. Because if I can like see that there is an order to things, um, if that there's order in the chaos, I'm more capable of standing in the chaos, if that makes sense. So, so maybe that's what the pictures need to represent is order in the, in the chaos. And I, and I think like that, like for me, like, you know, when I was doing all that work with women, like, you know, getting them naked, like naked and totally, you know, that was like, and, you know, to stand in fearlessness mm -hmm. was, that was like grounding for me. So like that gave me, um, I, I, yeah courage, strength, like recognition, um, um, signs, companionship, like whatever those things are that help us cope, right? Mm -hmm. Coping mechanisms. Totally, totally coping mechanisms. And like, you know, I don't know, like the last week too of just seeing like how mature I am and like how, how I've been able to like really create, like really accumulate a shit ton of tools to deal with the crazy ass shit that life continuously hands me, you know? And like seeing what it looks like when people don't have those tools and like watching the world fucking fall apart around me, you know? So it's like, yeah, I think, I think using the tarot is a really cool idea too, because it's like, I can really deepen into each almost theme of the card and, um, yeah, and kind of like see where it's applying to myself and really like be conscientious of like. I, I just I just don't feel like you have to be literal. I feel like you need to just, and I feel like you're powerful enough and you know enough about it that you are gonna like put it put it together. It's gonna, you know, even make up your own. Like, you know, don't, they're just crutches, right? Totally, yeah. So they're Maybe. not the end all, like it's not like eye for an eye. Like, here's the symbol, I'm gonna do it. Like, yep. I would love to see you do an image about hawks and birds, you know? I did a lot of stuff about birds. There's a lot of ways to incorporate hawks. You can take pictures of them and collage them into backgrounds, you know, they, you, you know, that there's a lot of set just, you know, so that's a theme, that's a picture maybe you have to do. Like perspective, you know what I mean? Like, and like the candles, pictures on candles, pictures of, on candles, I saw beautiful. Some, I've seen some beautiful pictures of women and candles lately mm. um, or candles. That's a really, I mean, even just from listening to you talk, there's two like new shoot ideas. Um, but yeah. I mean, I think you're on it. I think, I think you're done it and you're getting closer. Um, yeah. I think that you still should be like um, looking at images, you know, every time you make this next leap, of construction in your brain about what, 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 why you're making art and what the art is about. You need to like look back at the pictures and what pictures you can use. Take those couple that we pulled out of that grouping today, print them, um, keep them closed, put them in a file, you know, uh, separate than the other ones. I still don't think you have a, t I mean, you have a working title, but I still think you're, I still think the title's, you know, something more original, more specific to you. Mm -hmm. Totally. You know, like talk mood. I mean, I don't know, like, you know, some uh, more like you. I think too, like when I. You or your spiritual name for yourself or like whatever this. I think too, once I, I think I'm just going to like really focus on creating the work right now. And like, as the, it kind of appears to me and as it like starts to show itself, I'll just keep shooting and like, or start shooting and moving through the process. And then as they start to accumulate, like maybe they'll speak to me, which ends up actually happening a lot. Like I'm not usually yeah. consciously going into it thinking this is what I want to create. I'm letting it unfold, which is a lot. It's really related to what I was talking about too, with like letting it unfold and then looking at it to like decide what it's saying, opposed to like what yeah. my, what I need to say, you know? Because Yeah, you don't, yeah, you want, you want, it's to have a voice in the conversation. It's not just your voice, you know, it's not just the controller, the organizer, you know, you wanna, you wanna get something back from it too, you know? And that's why I always like to use the four by five because I, and that's why I like to use the wax because I feel like I'm humble. You know, on the one hand you wanna be like the bossy artist person with all the ideas and the big heavy brain and everything and vision and talent and all of that, but, 
but that's like why you also want to be humble to something bigger and higher than you so you can be like yeah kick my ass i don't know what the fuck i'm doing or oh my god look what look what you gave me look at this gift this, you know this is so this is so cool i feel so lucky right so we either want to be like suffering or feeling lucky right so it's one or the other constantly right. it goes minute to minute what a little pippy long stocking with that hair i don't know what the fuck to do with my hair lately fucking if i like if i put it up i just look bald i just look like a big oval head <laughs> Bald. I'm like oh. start to wear say bald. I can be like one of those like yeah, you don't look Amish. bald. I can be one of those Amish ladies here. Get the get the fuck out of here. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I look like a dude. <laughs> now I have to I have to have long hair. But my hair, I can't now it's all wet and it's freezing. It's fucking wet and won't dry. Yeah, it's like it's hard in the winter. I'm feeling it too. Okay, well, we're thank you so much. I um that was a good one. Yes, yeah. That was a good one. Uh, so what are you doing I'm, next? Yeah. Hey, I'm going to shoot tomorrow.